Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson, we are going to learn how to debug an Angular component test when something is going wrong. We are also going to fix this failing test and learn how to trigger manually change detection in Angular component tests. So here we are trying to test here this Angular presentational component and as we have seen on the previous lesson, the test is now failing. We can see that the number of courses here on this particular assertion, unexpected number of courses, is not being met. We are seeing a card's length of zero, meaning that there are no course cards being outputted to the DOM. So let's see how can we troubleshoot what is going on here. One way of quickly getting an idea of the current state of the component is to print the component's HTML to the console. And we can do so in the following way, by accessing the component debug element and from there we can access the property native element. So this is going to give us the native DOM element that corresponds to the component. From here we can access the standard DOM property outer HTML. So this is not an Angular specific property, this is a DOM property. And let's print out here the current state of the DOM of the component to the browser console. Let's quickly re-execute the test and have a look at the console again. So now now that the test has been executed, if we inspect here the console, we can see here the current state of the component. And we can see that the component is actually empty. We are going to see that the component template is looping here through an array of courses. So this essentially means that the courses array is empty and nothing is getting printed out to the screen. So going back here to our test specification, it looks like this initial line where we are assigning the courses member variable with an array of courses is not getting taken into account by the Angular component. And this is actually normal Angular testing behavior. So after assigning any data to a component via an input property, we also need to notify the component that some changes were made. We need to trigger the component change detection mechanism. This change detection mechanism is going to look for changes in, in this case, any template expressions of the component. And if some changes are detected, then the DOM is going to get updated with the latest data. So in order to trigger change detection, we need to use again the text fixture. And in the text fixture, we need to call the detect changes method. We are going to see that this time around, we have here a lot more HTML in our console. Let's quickly switch to the browser test report. So as we can see this time around, our new test is passing as expected. And we can also see here in the console that this time around we have here a series of Angular material cards containing for example the testing course and the other courses on the list. So as you can see what was missing here was this call to fixture.detect changes. Notice that this test is not an asynchronous test. This test is completely synchronous. We are modifying some data in the public API of the component. We are manually triggering the Angular change detection mechanism and this is going to synchronously update the DOM. So there are no asynchronous operations involved in this process, such as for example, set timeouts, HTTP requests, intervals or other common browser asynchronous operations. The component gets updated synchronously, so we can immediately assert here the test result without having to resort to something such as, for example, the async test utility that we have used before. This is a purely synchronous test. Notice that we will also cover in detail in this course a synchronous Angular testing. One of the main points here is that there is no need to use by default any of the asynchronous testing utilities such as async or fake async if we don't need it. If we can make our test purely synchronous then we should do so because that is easier to read and maintain. As we can see, in the concrete case of this test example, we managed to write our test in a fully synchronous way without having to resort to any auxiliary Angular testing utilities. And with this, we have confirmed that our component is indeed displaying here a list of course cards. Let's now implement the last spec of our test suite. We're going to confirm that a particular course is getting correctly displayed in the DOM. 